Hi everyone, Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. Thanks so much for being here and thank you for your support. Okay, uh, Nitrin, we're going to complete this Gosho, this letter. Um, he closes with, he closes this uh, supremacy of the law with, as you might expect, another um, It's a statement, it's a complex statement, but it's a com statement about his life, his commitment, and his moment in history. But he equates his moment in history to um, kind of a general rule um, that if you stand in your life for a proper values, life-affirming values, um, and certainly, in this case, for the Lotus Sutra of, of all values, um, certain things will take place in your life. Uh, because you stand for something strongly, you are likely to have detractors and people who would see you removed. At the same time, um, you will be protected from... Uh, To the degree that you are staunch in your proper opinions and more than your opinions, your teaching of those opinions, uh, which is what brings about this ire from those that would have power over you, um, you, will, you will be protected, but that's not to say you won't see the ire. It will be directed at you repeatedly, but ultimately it will not succeed. Uh, that sometimes seems of little comfort. So Nietzschean adds here that all great humans, all great teachers, all great um, compassionate teachers in world history and certainly throughout Japan's history that have been upheld as great uh, saints or bodhisattvas or teachers such as Hachiman and uh, uh, other rulers, as well as within the Buddhist tradition, like Dengyo and uh, Tendai and so on. Um, they achieve that status because they endure. They endure the negativity and don't cave into it. They maintain their position of rightful thinking and influence. And the point is made here, as you've heard in other ways uh, throughout the Gosho uh, and through the sutras, that um, in this way of thinking and influence, uh, it's no hidden attribute that you are putting your life, your body on the line for your beliefs, for your influence. Uh, and yet, you continue to live, so your body is protected, your life is protected. And so, after your passing, then your memory will be protected, and it will live long beyond, in other words, your influence will remain in the sphere of influence that you had in your lifetime, and may even grow. And so he, he will point out the history of Japan through Hachiman and how he came to be this great um, cultural icon uh, for many people who don't even understand exactly what Hachiman is. Uh, there is still this reverence for this personages, this personage of Hachiman as a Japanese point of honor. Um, I don't mean to say the Japanese people are, are ignorant about it. I mean to say that the legend, the influence, the honor paid to this Hachiman 
is inculcated culturally. And this is because of actions taken by a human that were of great honor. And they may have cost him his life, but his life, in a way, lives on through the influence he imparted onto the society and continues to impart simply because he's an embodiment of those values. So uh, Nietzsche wants us to understand that uh, that's true for all of us. Whether it influences a nation, our families, our communities, however far that influence reaches, that it does that influence does not die with us. If anything, it can be it can grow. So, the commitment to life affirming influence in one's own life and to others. is more lasting, more enduring than even our own lives. Of course, you can't have that enduring influence without the life. This is samsara. There's always a duality, right? But the point is that if you practice myoho renge kyo, without the frailty of knowing that your words will fall short because you may die, but instead with the resolve that your influence will live on long after your physical body ends, then your level of resolve and your, your also your level of enlightenment, your life condition raises and becomes even more influential because that sensation of permanence of of long lasting influence in the right way is much larger than what this human body can carry right influence of mind has no time limit no expiration because the mind is ever here. So long as the universe continues to prov provide and produce sentient beings, and even insentient, but that's a subject for another video, then this aura of existence and life affirmation, it, it has to continue. It, it, it is built into it just as Buddhahood is inherent in our every cell. So why not act like it? Celebrate it. Share it. And obviate it at every, at every turn. This is, a, this is a difficult thing to understand in our daily practice because um, in samsara, we are constantly surrounded by things that would thwart our jubilant, life-affirming nature. There's always obstacles. But those same obstacles, if we have the right mindset about them, become just more feathers to tinkle, tickle our Buddhahood, if you will. <laughs> they become constant reminders of what it is to be unaffected by those silly things. I know it, it gets very hard and I don't mean to trivialize anybody's struggles out there. Believe me, I know. And yet having this kind of thinking as a goal is part and parcel of our healing ourselves and leading ourselves to our awakenings. You see how I say that? Because as again, I will remind you, we are our own teachers and we're social animals we're social constructs so yeah we look to others for those sparks of 
inspiration as well. So we need be thankful of that as well. And to whatever degree we can recompense those same um, life-affirming influences. It's like saying thank you to somebody else who says thank you. We, we need to live life that way. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to this. Thanks for sharing this. Thanks for adding to this in your own perspective. Right? So let's go ahead and uh, finish this go show with those thoughts and minds. And I think with those thoughts and minds, it will become obvious what Nietzsche is saying here. Um, and I can't resist pointing out how similar this is to our own times today. There's such a tremendous amount of anger and greed and, and, and just and really f foolishness going on in the many governments and leaders, quote unquote, that we have today. It's just, the dialogue is just so devoid of the substance of what's going on, of humanity. It's all about posturing and, and celebrity and cult. And let's, can we get back to the human experience, the human being? Do we really need all these abstracts of power and money and influence and war do we really need that in order to talk about what it is to be a human being and exists free and fearlessly? There's so much fear mongering in the world today and not for, uh, you know, nothing. There's a lot of slaughter going on. Oh my goodness. You know, and all of these things weigh on us, whether we confront them directly or not. They're in our daily lives. And it's very easy to slip into that slope of violence and retribution and fear because it's omnipresent. We need to find a way to quell those fires. And it starts with each one of us. Some of us may become great politicians and we can enact much greater influence but it's an uphill battle, so we need to chant Myoho Renge Kyo, Namo Myoho Renge Kyo. To try to push this calmer influence into life. To try to push this life-affirming influence into our environs, right? Okay, so here we go. From the annotations on the Nirvana Sutra, Quote, one's body is insignificant while the law is supreme. One should give one's life in order to propagate the law. Now, that doesn't mean you need to immolate yourself. That doesn't mean that you, you know, pull a Joan of Arc. Uh, that's not what this means. It doesn't mean one should give one's life. Is not to give it in the sense of ending it to honor the Lotus Sutra. That's not an honor of the Lotus Sutra. To give one's life is to dedicate one's life. To dedicate every effort we make in every day to attain the Buddha-ness of whatever we're experiencing. To be an exemplar of Buddha mind in every situation. That's giving one's life. That's the resolve. That's the dedication. That's what Nietzsche is constantly reinforcing. That with that Ichinen, that volition, that will of constantly seeing everything we encounter, encounter from, a, from a, a Buddha mind perspective. That's Buddha wisdom. Yes, again, uh, another obvious statement here is that this is the hard to practice Hard to understand teaching. This is why Shakyamuni said it. 
This is why Tendai said it. This is why Dengyo said it. This is why Nichiren says it. This is why it's documented through all the sutras. It ain't easy. Why isn't it easy? Because we live a samsaric life that can easily negatively influence us. And we forget. We slip away from our Buddha nature. But the more we catch that happening, the more powerful this teaching is. It's a constant reminder to be on our best behavior. Nietzsche goes on from this quote, because my body is insignificant, not because it's not worth anything, it's insignificant in the uh, dynamics of upholding the law, myoho renge It's not insignificant in the propagation of namu myoho renge It's insignificant in its human, samsaric ball of desires and wants and needs. That's what's insignificant. That's what he means when he says that. I am struck and hated because his human life isn't as significant as what he's saying and influencing and upholding, then his body, the insignificant part, is attacked. That's the only way they can get to him. They can't attack his mind. They can't attack his teachings, his influence. The only thing they can attack is this human vessel. That's what he means. But because the law is supreme, you see, it will spread without fail. If the Lotus Sutra spreads, my mortal remains will be respected. And if my remains are respected, they will benefit the people. Then I will come to be revered as highly as Bodhisattva Hachiman is now. You should understand that at that time, the men and women who supported me will be honored as greatly as Takenokuchi and Yakaimiya. Takenokuchi being the initial person traveling from Japan to Korea and later uh, um, uh, known as, folklore as uh, Hachiman. So, uh, so here again, when he says, my remains will be respected, he's not talking about his bodily remains to the degree that, you know, there's relics and those kind of things going on. He's actually talking about his influence, his teaching, his doctrine, the amount of people he's influenced, the, the remonstrations with the government, everything that Nietzsche stands for. And he's right, because this is what we're doing right now. Right? Over 700 years later, we're looking at Nietzsche and we're going, what, what an, a stalwart example of not caving in to fear and saying the right thing, upholding Myoho Renge Kyo, even in the face of samurai. <laughs> These people aren't fooling around, right? Death is just a daily, you know, occurrence to them. I don't want to minimize, minimize day, death because look at the news. I, I don't want to. We're surrounded by so much violence and anger in our society today. It's hard for me not to talk about it. As, as a man, as a, as a Buddhist, it's absolutely abhorrent. And the juvenile arguments going on surrounding the issue are, are just so, they're so depraved and so low-minded. I some, it makes me wonder how Nietzsche felt watching all of this depravity and slaughter going on around him, feeling powerless to say or do anything about it, even though he took the bull by the horns and he went to the leaders of the nation and called them out. I, I, I don't know if I, I, not only do I not know if I, I, I think I could muster the courage, but because of the nature 
of getting to those leaders today. The, the many obfuscating layers of violence and authoritarianship from the local authorities to the state authorities to the FBI and Homeland and all of the rest. How many obstacles would you have to overcome to get to leaders who, would they actually be effective? Because now talking to the president is almost moot. The, the Senate and the, and the House, they have more to do with running this country and they have demonstrated for decades now that they aren't at least bit interested about you and I. It's all power politics, money shifting, militarization. How do we pierce that? And my answer always, even through Nietzsche, resounds. Daimoku. Namo myoho rengekyo. Only through this mechanism can we achieve a wellspring of some kind of shield, some kind of penetrating shield, force field, if you will, that will allow us to influence these, these mechanisms of our society. It sometimes seems overwhelming. And then... I see little things happen in my own community. And I know they're a result of my resolve. And so I feel inspired. I keep going. And I hope that our dialogue as a Sangha does this for you as well. Keep that practice strong. All right, back to the Go Show. The benefits that come from opening the eyes of even one blind person are beyond description. How then is it possible to describe the benefits that derive from opening the blind eyes of all the Japanese people and from giving the gift of sight to all human beings throughout Jambudvipa and the other three continents? In the fourth volume of the Lotus Sutra, it reads, quote, If after the Buddha pa has passed into extinction, one can understand the meaning of the Sutra, one will be the eyes of the world for heavenly and human beings. Those who uphold the Lotus Sutra will be the eyes for all the heavenly and human beings in the world. Therefore, those Japanese who are hostile to me are in effect gouging out the eyes of all heavenly and human beings of the world. And by heavenly, he means that lasting influence I was talking about. As a result, heaven is enraged and strange events occur in the skies day after day while earth is infuriated and calamities strike in series month after month. Chakra was a heavenly lord, yet he greatly respected the fox who taught him the law. As a result, he was reborn as Shakyamuni Buddha, the Lord of Teachings. The boy Snow Mountains honored a demon as his teacher and became the Lord of the Threefold World. Great sages and honorable priests or monks of old did not reject the law, no matter what the appearance of its teachers. I may be a foolish man, but I am surely not inferior to a fox or a demon. The noblest people in the present age are in no way superior to Chakra or the Boy Snow Mountains. Yet because of my low social position, they have rejected my wise words. That is why the country is now on the brink of ruin. How lamentable. And what I find even sadder is that I will be unable to save those disciples of mine who have pitied my sufferings. If anything at all happens, please come over here. I will welcome you. Let us die of starvation together among the mountains. And I would imagine that your daughter, Otto, has become a fine, intelligent girl. I will write you again, Nichiren. So here he is again, putting his own life on the altar of Myoho Rengekyo saying only in this practice of the Lotus Sutra, in the 
in the commitment to Buddha wisdom and the experience of Buddha in our lives. Is there any value to this human life? And even if it comes to us sitting together, not alone, not Satori, together, Sangha, even if it's just you and I sitting together, inspiring each other's Buddha nature as we slowly decay and die, let us rather do that together than to succumb to the egregious, evil, life-unaffirming greed and violence going on in the world. Let's die enlightened. It's, it's a very poetic commitment, but it's very illustrative of how intensely powerful this practice can be with the proper commitment and resolve. <laughs> I hope that's inspiring. I know my voice sounds a little bit of a downer. Uh, I am weighed down, I will admit, by what I hear in the news and what I see going on in the world. It, it greatly saddens me. But I continue to do this because it keeps me going day to day. Because it gives me hope. It gives me an idea that this is a temporary thing. That humans are a much bigger experiment than this little lifetime of mine. That whatever pains that I go through and experience in this life, they're just the sufferings of life. And the less I pay attention to them, not irresponsibly, but I don't want to invest in those aspects of life. I want to invest in the beauty, the butterflies, the daisies of life, the the smiles of life, the you of my life, right? We give each other value. That's the value that means something. That's the value that's important. Let's keep giving everything value right, right in the face of those things that devalue, right? We must stand for that. That gives our lives supreme value exciting value life affirming value all right namo myoho renge kyo see these podcasts wherever you get your podcasts uh no see them listen to them er, <laughs> anyway the buddhahood podcast remember those three words okay and uh, i will see you in the next one thanks so much for participating if you can um I'm thinking of trying to do something on Patreon that might be unique. I don't know. I'm always wrestling between do I make something attractive on Patreon to inspire more uh, some kind of a support mechanism through there so that, uh, you know, as, as Davey 504 would say, to pay my water bill or pay my light bill. Or is that, see, I don't want to commercialize Buddhism. That's crazy. This is, this is just not that. Um, so I continue to offer all of this uh, uh, scholarship that I investigate in, in my little chats as, uh, as free. I, I think that's the way it should be. I think that's what Buddhism is meant to be. Um, we shouldn't be a, a cost or a burden on one another. That's antithetical to Buddhist uh, thinking, right? Um, if you can think of a, a way to resolve my conundrum there, please let me know. But uh, whether you come here on YouTube or here, be it as it may on uh, Patreon or on Cocoscope, um, you know, please enjoy these lessons. If there's any way uh, you can help support this effort, oh, I can't tell you how greatly appreciative I am of that. Um, but uh, it's it's not necessary. I said, your practice is what's necessary. All right? All right. Enough blah, blah, blah. See you in the next one.